This screencast is looking at describing the intrinsic and extrinsic regulation of heart rate and the sequence of excitation of the heart muscle. So unlike skeletal muscle that requires thought, um, stimulus from the brain to be able to tell muscles to contract and relax and with what force, the heart is slightly different. The heart has its own little pacemaker. Um, it's called the sonoatrial node or SA node. We need to look at the influence by the sympathetic and parasympathetic, parasympathetic branches of the autonomic nervous system and also by adrenaline. So when adrenaline is released, we also need to look at it being more important than simply to increase heart rate. Uh, with adrenaline, we will also increase glycogen and lipid breakdown. And this actually makes sense because as we increase heart rate, we also increase oxygen delivery to our working muscles. With an increase in oxygen delivery, we can increase our rate of aerobic energy production and the two main fuels that we use for aerobic energy production are glycogen and our lipids or fats. With respect to the difference between intrinsic and extrinsic regulation, intrinsic regulation is the fact that our heart will continue unless we die or have a massive heart attack will continue to beat in a normal fashion of its own accord providing its own electrical stimulus from the SA node unless we receive external stimuli of some description now that could be that we start to exercise and therefore particular hormones are released that increase our heart rate it could be that we believe we're about to do physical activity or we become nervous excited agitated and again hormones are released that then affect the rate at which our heart beats all of that external stimulus that releases hormones that adjust our heart rate that's the extrinsic regulation of heart rate this is a picture of the heart obviously but includes information now regarding the conductivity of electrical impulses within the heart um, the excitation of the heart so that our different chambers will both contract and relax. So we'll start off with the SA node because that's where it happens. So the sonoatrial or SA node fires a stimulus across the walls of both the left and right atria causing them to contract. So here's our SA node here sends signals across the atria so that they contract. It then passes on the stimulus to the AV node or the arterioventricular node. Now this, being the AV node, directs 
the stimulus to the AV bundle, which is known as the bundle of his. So that comes down to here. Now once it's there, which is within the, the septum or the vertex of the heart, or travel down to the vertex of the heart, we travel through the apex, so it now comes down in two branches, and then up to the Purkinje fibres. Now that Purkinje fibres distribute the stimulus across both ventricles and we now are in a position through this bit here where we can actually get the walls of the ventricle to contract. So now going back to the intrinsic, extrinsic, sympathetic, parasympathetic um, explanations. There are two different factors involved in heart rate management. We have our intrinsic and extrinsic controls. Intrinsic regulation of the heart is the result of the unique nature of cardiac tissue. It being self-regulating, maintains its own rhythm without direction. On the other hand, extrinsic controls are those that come from both hormonal responses as well as commands from the nervous system. The central nervous system and the autonomic nervous system. Extrinsic regulation can cause the heart rate to change rapidly because of the chemicals that circulate in the blood or by direct action of nerves that go to the heart. So an example of this, here they talk about indicating that you're about to do a test, a surprise test, become anxious, nervous, therefore hormones being released that speed up the heart. We'll put it in terms of you're told to do a beep test that you didn't know that you were, sorry, that you did know that you were going to, to do. So you're asked to come change the next day, information given about doing the beep test, you get a heart rate baseline, respiratory rate baseline, you then go to actually start the beep test, and without even having done any physical activity at all, heart rate increases by around about 20 beats for the majority of people in that group. There's no cardiovascular or cardiorespiratory change as a result of this change in heart rate. It's simply the effect of the heart of chemicals, sorry, on the heart of chemicals and nerves responding to an external experience. So now looking at the autonomic nervous system and its role. We have our sympathetic and parasympathetic components. Our sympathetic components increase heart rate by releasing neural hormones, catecholamines, epinephrine, norepinephrine. Now, these hormones are called cardio accelerators because heart rate is accelerated any acceleration of the heart is called tachycardia our parasympathetic nervous system 
allows for a decrease in heart rate. Now the neurons release the neurohormone acetylcholine which inhibits our heart rate. When we slow our heart rate down it's called bradycardia. So a quick little revision diagram. We start off with the AV node sending off signals to the atrium so they contract the stimulus goes down to our AV node which directs it to the bundle of his the bundle of his direct it down through the apex through the septum of the ventricles up to the Purkinje fibers and then our ventricular walls